So somebody said to me this morning, uh, this is no pressure, but this is the last service of the decade, so don't ruin it. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you. Um, so this is, uh, this is our family service, and so we don't have any Kingdom Kids ministry going on this morning, but um, I do want to say we, we do have child care available um, for zero to five years old in the church office, um, if that's something that you are looking for. But other than that, we have everybody in here together this morning, and so that means a couple things. Uh, well, more, most importantly, it means we're going to be out of here pretty quick today. We're going we're gonna to keep it short and sweet. Um, my goal for this morning is if we can just be reminded of who Jesus is and be encouraged um, to seek after him, then that would be a win for us this morning. Sound good? Sweet, because it's what we're doing anyways. Um, so, uh, you know, we're already into this season of looking at the, at the new year, and it seems like when the new year comes around, there's like, and there's, there's a, uh, it feels like a fresh start. Um, and you hear people start talking about New Year's resolutions, and um, I don't know if you're into that or not. I think they're kind of fun. Um, I enjoy doing New Year's resolutions. Uh, you guys have probably heard the statistics, like 80% of New Year's resolutions fail, and usually by like mid-February. Um, and so I've had a lot of them fail, but I've, I've done a couple. I did, uh, I did no soda for a year one time. That was, that was tough for like a little bit, and then it was just super easy because it was like no big deal. Um, and then the next January, like the January 1st, after I completed the year, I was like, I got to have a Coke. And I drank it, and it just drank like I was, it, it felt like I was drinking a bucket of chemicals or something. <laughs> and so people are like, oh, so you don't drink soda anymore? Like, you did that. You must not want it. I'm like, no, I drink it. I, I, I pushed through when it felt weird. I, I adjusted my body back to soda. I just wanted to do it for a year. Um, and I, I tried to get my nephew to do that with me, and he made it until like, he made it until like March. And he called me, and he was working construction in, in Miami, and he got called to this job that was at a place where they made root beer. And he was like, dude, the temptation. I couldn't handle it. I failed. It was delicious. Um, but some of, the, uh, some of the most popular New Year's resolutions, you probably heard them. Number one, what do you think it is? Lose weight. That's right. Number one, lose weight. Number two, save money. Uh, maybe spend more time with family, less on technology, that sort of thing. And um, I enjoy New Year's resolutions, and I think uh, they can, they don't always, but they can sort of expose, expose what we really want in our hearts. Not, maybe not some of the, the lesser ones like drinking soda, <laughs> but, it, but um, they have the opportunity to sort of expose maybe the things that we desire, the things that we long for. And so if we're, if we're looking into 2020, um, and, and I hope that the people in this room that we can say that Man, in 2020, I want to love Jesus more than, I, more than I do now. I want to pursue Jesus. I want to be closer to Jesus by the end of 2020 than I am right now. Um, I hope that we can say that. And, and the good news is that God has given us very practical ways that we can seek him, that we can pursue him, that we can draw near to him. And so I just want to remind us of those, to encourage us in those this morning. So we're we're, we're talking about pursuing Jesus in 2020. So let's pray, and we will we'll get into it. Jesus, thank you that, that you're a God who's not far away. Uh, you're, you're close to us. Lord, in this time, we're, we're reminded of, of a fresh start and a new beginning, and we, we thank you that there, is a, there are new mercies in you every single day um, because of your grace, because of how good you are. And so, Lord, we just ask that you, would, that you would work this morning. We know that you're with us, and we ask that you would move mightily in our hearts this morning, um, and you would stir in us a, a desire, a hunger for more of you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I, I want to start by asking this question. Number one is, is what are you seeking? What are you seeking? Um, and I think that's an important question that probably goes deeper than maybe our, our knee-jerk reactions to it. Um, but, but we talk a lot here at the Avenue about, about how we don't just want to change our behavior. Like if, if, if it's behavior modification, then we're probably missing the point of what Jesus wants to do in our lives. Jesus does, he just doesn't want to change your behavior so that you are a, a person who looks nicer and can check the boxes and keep rules. Jesus changes our hearts which actually changes our behavior later, but that's not the, the point. The point is, is the Holy Spirit working on our hearts. 
And see, God has, God has actually made us to know him. He's made us to seek him. He's made us to worship him. But the problem is in our sin, like we, we let other things sit on the throne of our heart. Our heart was made so that, so that God would sit on the throne and we would enjoy him and seek him and be with him. But we in our sin often put something else on the throne in our hearts. We all have tendencies to put different things there, um, but at the end of the day, it's sin, and we do that. And whatever lives, whatever lives on the throne of your heart, whether that's Jesus or something else, that, that dictates what you're going to pursue. That dictates what you're going to live towards. So I want to look quickly at a, a verse in John. Um, this is when Jesus is, is beginning his ministry. He's going around. He's calling the disciples. And in this particular passage, he is calling um, Matthew and John, and they begin to follow him. They, they begin to literally walk behind him. And it says this, Jesus turned and saw them following, and he said to them, what are you seeking? He stops, he turns around and says, like, what, what do you want? What, why do you want to follow me? What are you really seeking? What's, what's your goal in this? Why? What are you seeking? And I think that's a, a profound and a deep question. There's this quote that I want to show you guys. Um, it comes from James K.A. Smith. He, wrote, he writes this book um, called You Are What You Love, and he says this about that verse. Jesus doesn't encounter Matthew and John or you and me. What he does not do, he doesn't turn around and ask, what do you know? He doesn't turn around and even ask, what do you believe? He turns around and asks, what do you want? What does your heart want? Because I, I can know something to be true and yet live towards something else. I can, even, I can even believe something to be true and yet live towards something else in my desires and my actions and my habits and the way that I live. So Jesus says, what do you want? We live towards what our hearts really want. And so what lives on the throne of our hearts will dictate what we pursue. So I, I would just challenge you guys, um, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, take, take 10 minutes and try to, get, try to get quiet and really ask yourself that like deep down. Not, don't ask yourself, what do I believe about God or what do I know about God? Ask yourself, what is, what is my heart drawn to? What, what, if I just looked at my life, what is my life oriented to? What am I living towards? And I, I think that if, if we look deeply at some of those questions, most of the time, most of the time, Jesus probably isn't on the throne of our hearts. Most of the time, I think we operate from sin. And when we recognize that, when we recognize that maybe, maybe my heart is, is drawn to things that aren't Jesus, when I recognize that, it can feel like, ugh. But it's actually a gift because that's, that's the Holy Spirit, like, like making you aware of the fact that you need something else. That's, that's actually a gift from God. That's good news. That's the work of the Spirit. So what are you seeking? It's a simple question, but it's a really, really deep question that I think we would do well to consider. <clears throat> Number two, seek the person. Seek the person. What does it mean to seek Jesus? Well, like I said, God has given us super practical ways that we can do that, that we can, that we can connect with him both together and individually, and they're called spiritual disciplines. It's sort of where, where I want to camp out today is in spiritual disciplines. Like these, these practices, these habits, these spiritual activities that God has given us as a way to get to know him. Activities that, op, that, that offer us the opportunity for more relationship with him. So most of you guys know uh, my wife, Clara. Um, we have been married for about, uh, for four years actually this week, and then uh, we, yeah, we're setting records. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we grew up together. We, we went to elementary, middle, high school, college together. She was my girlfriend for like five minutes in sixth grade, and then that ended as all sixth grade relationships do. Um, but, but we really started dating in like 11th, 12th grade. And so I started wanting to like, I started wanting to get to know her, to be around her more. Um, I was like, she's super cute. I like her. I want to, like, I want more of that. <laughs> And uh, so she was reading this book 
she was reading this book that had just come out, and you've probably heard of it, The Hunger Games. <laughs> you're like, you're 12 years old. Don't, that's not, that's not what's important. Uh, she, w she was reading this book, and I have this great plan that I'm like, oh man, that'll give me like so much to talk to her about. Like if I read this book, it'll be a great way for us to connect. So I see her at school, and, and um, I'm like, hey, can I, can I borrow your, your copy of The Hunger Games? I've really been wanting to read that, which is just a straight lie. Like just start, started it out like no 11th grade dude one, was like, oh, I've really been dying to read that novel. <laughs> no, false. But I'm like, yeah, I've really been wanting to read that. Can I borrow your copy of The Hunger Games? And so she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll bring it to school tomorrow. Um, and, and so she brings it the next day. And I take it home and I start to read it. And, and I'm like, I got to just read a chapter at a time so that I can like the next day we can have something. If I read the whole thing, that's like one conversation. But if I read a chapter, I'm like, yo, chapter one was so good. And like, and again, another lie. But I'm like, we can talk about it. And then the next day, chapter two. And so over the course of a few days, I start to, I read this book and we start to talk about it. <laughs> and while I'm reading it, I remember one night, I'm, I'm laying in bed, like reading this book so that I can get to know Clara better. And I, I like fall asleep and I like lay it down right here. And I'm like, <laughs> And this book smells amazing. <laughs> I'm like, dude, does everything that girls have just smell good? Because nothing I have smells good, and this book smells so good. <laughs> like, it just, and I was like, oh, that's weird, whatever. I come to find out later, she tells me, like, yeah, when, that night when I went home to get the book, I sprayed perfume up in the air and then waved the book through it <laughs> <laughs> so that you would think I smell good. And I was like, that's super weird. And it worked, it worked. <laughs> it was really good strategy. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, my, my desire to get to know Clara led me to like, yeah, I'll, I'll read this book if it means like more of a chance to have a relationship with you. And, and the same sort of thing is true now that we're married. We, we do th like, we'll have, we'll go on dates or we do like phoneless dates. Like just, just leave the phone at home and let's go have dinner and hang out so we can talk and, and be with one another. If, if like leaving the phone at home gives me a better chance to get to know you, I'm in. If that's, if that's more of an opportunity for a relationship, I'm in for that. And so I, I think that those same principles are, are probably true of spiritual discipline. See, the goal of a spiritual discipline is not just the practice. The goal is to get to the, to the relationship behind it. The goal is not just to go read your Bible. The goal is to interact and form a relationship and fall deeply in love with Jesus. And, and I think a lot of times in the church, we kind of miss this, maybe. At, at least, like, growing up in the church, that was maybe some of my experience. It's like, man, I got to read the Bible so that I don't feel bad about not reading the Bible. <laughs> so I can check the box because Christians should read the Bible. And, and that, that totally defeats the purpose because I'm, I'm missing the person just, and just doing a practice. When the whole point of that spiritual discipline is so that I can meet God. So when I, when I approach the scripture, it's not to check a box of I, I did my Christian duty. It's Jesus, I want to know you in this. Will you meet me in this? And I think that is true of spiritual disciplines. The goal is the person. When you're captivated by a person, those practices then just become vehicles and avenues to get to know them. John Piper says, every, everyone needs means by which they meet Jesus every day. And that's what spiritual disciplines offer. So what are they? Just a couple big ones. Reading scripture, prayer, fasting, worship, Sabbath. Like Sabbath, like stopping. Our life is go, go, go. Do all these things. Accomplish all these things. No, just stop. Just be, just be with Jesus. Just stop. And these, these are the practical tools that God has gifted to us to get to know him. All of these Things. We, we have to be about these things as followers of Jesus. And I, I think, like, how, how often do, do we feel distant from God or feel like he's not there and, and all the time we're, we're not walking in, in the ways that he's given us to know him? I, I feel convicted about that. I've done that. I, I'm not in the word. I'm not spending time in prayer. And, and then all of a sudden I'll say, God, why do you feel so far away? Where are you? <laughs> When, when he's gifted me avenues to know him and I don't walk in them. And he, all the time he's inviting. He's inviting us to that. He's inviting us to himself through these things because our, our hearts 
need like daily, hourly, sometimes every minute, like to be reoriented to the gospel, to be realigned with the gospel. And he's given us spiritual disciplines to do that because without that, man, our, our hearts put something else on the throne every single time, every time. And then we find ourselves living a life in pursuit and living towards and desiring things that come from, a, from something else that's not Jesus on, our, on the throne of our heart. And we can know, know things about Jesus and believe things about Jesus, but really what I'm seeking is, is what's on the throne of my heart and my life is oriented toward something else that's not him. So it starts there. And, and just as a side note, man, what do I do if I don't, if I don't, you know, we talk about desiring the person and I want to be with the person. Man, what if I don't desire Jesus a ton right now? What if I'm not captivated by Jesus right now? It feels like a little bit of a grind. It feels like a little bit of a struggle to do these things. I feel a little bit turned off and exhausted. Man, in that case, I would just, I would just say, like I would, I would go to the Psalms because the Psalms, again, is like another gift to us that, that sort of covers a lot, a huge range of, of like human emotion and how that interacts with God. There are plenty of psalms that are like, God, where are you? I feel distant from you. I don't have a longing for you. I don't know where you are. How long are you going to leave me like this, God? Like, those are honest, honest prayers. And that's in the Bible. <laughs> so, so to go to God and be like, God, I don't feel like I desire you right now. I, I, I want to want you, but I don't think I want you right now. That's an honest prayer, and it's okay to go to God with like the reality of our situation in honest prayer. And, and oftentimes, almost all the time in, in the Psalms, those prayers turn from, God, I, I feel this way. This is how I feel. I feel like you're far away. I feel like I don't want to read my Bible. I feel like I don't want to seek you. And they always go from plea to praise. That God, I feel this way, but I know this about you. I know that you are there even though I don't feel close to you. I know that you want good for me, even though it feels like you don't. See, our feelings can be valid, but we, we can't allow our feelings to, like, to keep us from our Savior. Does that make sense? Our feelings can be valid, but when we allow our feelings to be the deciding factor of whether or not I'm going to be with Jesus, we're, we're missing out big time. Because the Psalms say, yeah, your feelings are true, your feelings are valid, and God's still God. Because we are going to experience a wide range of emotions because we are human beings. So lastly, here's some good news. Uh, number three is this. Seek, and you will find. Here's the spoiler alert. Seek, and you will find. Matthew 7, 7 says this. It's, Jesus is talking in this passage specifically about prayer, um, but he, I believe he's telling us something about the nature of God about who God is. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. See, we can, we can rest in God's promises. Our, our God is not a God who abandons us. He's a God who says, come to me. Come to me. He's a God who walks with us slowly, lovingly, correcting us, shaping us, slowly, for those of us who are in Christ. And I, I think that's, difficult, that's a tough sell in 2020. <laughs> because we like the now, we like the, 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 we like the lightning bolt of transformation, I want instant gratification, I want to be this way now. And that's, that's not the way that God works. And so hear this, if, if maybe you feel like it's a struggle sometimes, or you don't feel like I have this deep longing to be, to be close with Jesus right now. I have before, but I'm just in a tough spot. Hear this. God, God is at work far more often in your life through the ordinary and through the daily and through the faithful pursuit of him. On the days that you feel like it, on the days that you don't. And then when you look up after 5, 10, 20 years, you realize, man, God's been molding me and shaping me this whole time through these pursuits that he's given us. 
Matt Chandler says, he's like, man, when we talk about spiritual disciplines, you don't just wake up one day and become like the master of all of them. You don't just tear through scripture and, and, and give of your time and your money and you don't just like take this Sabbath and, and, and fast and you're not just killing all these things. He said it, it starts small. That's the way God works. It begins small. So, so as we think just practically about like going into 2020 and our, we're thinking through resolutions and stuff, I think instead of saying like, I'm going to read the Bible seven times this year, like, man, how much more formative might it be if we just said, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to seek after Jesus in this one particular area. I'm going to take this one discipline, this one habit, this one very small habit, and I'm going to practice it faithfully. And I'm going to see what God does. And then maybe that's going to grow. And then maybe that's going to grow. So instead of thinking big, I think maybe if we, if we thought small habits of, of where can I reorient my heart, if my heart does this, where can I do this every day? Where can I do this? And so no matter, no matter where your relationship is with Jesus, uh, some of us in here, maybe it might be your first time in church. Maybe you've never read the Bible. Some of you have been in the church forever, leaders in the church. I, I don't know specifically how, what it looks like for you to seek these spiritual disciplines in order to get to the person of Jesus. But I do know that Jesus calls us to the next right step in loving him. And so, and so you've got to think and you've got to pray, man, what is that next right step in engaging in these gifts that God's given us to know him? What is it for me? Maybe, it, maybe it's being in scripture for the first time regularly. Maybe it's walking in prayer. Maybe you've never fasted and that's like a thing. Man, I'm going to start like reading about that. I want to get into that a little bit. Maybe I'll fast like one meal a week and just begin to make that a habit. I, I think about the, the things that we do, like the habits that are already in our lives and how we can take those habits and then make them opportunities to reorient our hearts. Like thinking about, like every, we're, we're driving to work. Most of us drive to work. I can, I can just make that a, a drive to work, listen to the radio, or maybe I'll, maybe I'll pause the radio and say, man, when I drive to work, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna spend that time in prayer. I'm gonna pray out loud like a weirdo. I've done that before. <laughs> and people, you, you gotta stop when you get to the stoplight. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm gonna take this, this rhythm that I have and I'm just going to create a gospel like reorientation of it. I'm gonna spend my, my drive to work in prayer. And then as you're a person who does that every day for like five years, <laughs> God begins to change your heart. And when you get to work, your, your, your whole like idea of work is a little bit more gospel-centered. And you might get there with Jesus on the throne instead of something else that you drove there with. Like I said, maybe it's fasting once a week from a meal or, or getting in the Word before I check my phone in the morning. I don't know what it is for you, but I know that Jesus is calling you to more of Him, and, and the way that He seems to work is through us being faithful in the small things and reorienting our hearts to Him. So I just want to remind us um, Man, these, these disciplines and these, these activities, they're not so that Jesus likes us more. <laughs> they're not so that we feel better about ourselves and so that we can check the box of being good Christians. See, the only reason why we, why we love Jesus is because he loved us first. The only reason why you might be sitting there and saying, man, I think I want that. I think I want my life to be more oriented to the gospel. I think I, I, think I want to, to love Jesus more. Like, the only reason why you might have a desire in your heart to want to walk in these ways is because that's, the, that's God working on you already. Because on our own, like I said, we are sinful, and I will live with something else on the throne of my heart 24-7 if God's not at work in me, drawing me back to himself. That's what he does. Every single time, I'll live with something else on the throne of my heart. So I need, I need rhythms. I need people who are going to remind me and shape me of who I am in Jesus at the heart level. And that's only possible because Christ broke into the world and redeemed us. He started it, he does it in the middle, and he finishes it. That's the work of Jesus because he's good. So as, um, as the band comes up, we're going to close... Um, a little bit earlier, like I said tonight, uh, this morning, but um, man, as we, as we look at 2020, I just, I just think we can do better than like trying to lose weight and save money. And that's cool and do that. 
Um, but, but how much more life-changing might it be if we begin to, to, to like assess where our hearts are and then have habits and rhythms of regularly reorienting ourselves to the gospel? Because that, those, those practices, they give me more of an opportunity to get to know Jesus. I, I want to be with him. The, the more that I do these things, the more chance I get to be with him. The motivation comes from the person, not from the practice. So to sum it up, number one, what are you seeking? I think that's a deep question that we should think about. And if you come to a quick answer, I might sit a little longer. What am I really seeking? Not what do I believe, not what do I think. What, do I, what am I living towards? What lives on the throne of my heart will dictate what I live towards. So is that Jesus or is it something else? Number two, seek the person. Seek the person of Jesus, not just the practice. Our hearts need that gospel realignment. And so where, where, what habits, what little, what little uh, decisions can I make that will, that will form me and begin to, to have Jesus draw me in those ways to himself? These habits that give us more of an opportunity for a relationship with him. And then number three, the good news is seek and you will find. God does not abandon us. He's actually the one that's drawing you anyways. The gospel's not about a God who runs from us and hides from us. It's about a God who runs to us. About a God who ran to us and died in our place so that we could know him. He's, he doesn't abandon us as we seek him. He's faithful to shape us and he's faithful to shape us through the ordinary practice like the, the getting up when, when nobody else is up and getting alone with him. When nobody's celebrating that from a stage, nobody's clapping for you, you're just walking in the gifts that he's given you because you want to know him. That's what God does and then we can rest in the promises and the goodness of God because he's the one drawing us. So as we think about 2020, man, that's, I just wanna, I just wanna be with him. <laughs> I wanna be with him. And so what, what areas of my life can I make that happen? Very simply and very practically. So the prayer partners are gonna come forward. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna close in prayer. We're gonna, we're gonna sing one more song together and then uh, I'll come back up and dismiss us. Uh, so let's pray and then we'll enter into worship. So let's, let's pray one more time. Father, God, we're so thankful um, that you're a God who pursues us, that you're a God who loves us, you walk with us, you shape us, you lovingly form us more and more um, into the image of your perfect son. We thank you, we praise you, it's in Christ's name, amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. You are dismissed. Thanks, guys.